Is there anybody out there? I hate to steal your thunder, LeBron fans, but let me just preemptively tell you, this is a LeBron James hate channel. I am a LeBron James hater. So what else you got, you brilliant debaters, you? What else you got? I beat you to it. You got some emoticons? (laughs) You got some emojis to throw at me? (laughs) You geniuses. Welcome to a fireside chat. Well, a fireside reading with angry old hoops. This is going to be one of many chapters as we look back into the earlier years of LeBron James's career. And I know a lot of people express that LeBron James and Michael Jordan shouldn't even be compared. But they always are. So, you know, you don't just ignore that some people compared them and not interject with why that's not a good comparison. Sometimes when I'm bringing the two of them up, I'm explaining why it's not a good comparison. And this is another example of why it's not a good comparison. If anything, they're polar opposites of each other in how they approached the concept of competition and a true respect for the game, a respect for sports and sportsmanship. Anyway, I'm just going to read this article. (laughs) Uh, by Bill Livingston. And this was originally published May 10th of 2011. Cleveland, Ohio. These are grim times as Quitness Day approaches. The Miami Heat is one victory from the NBA Eastern Conference Finals. Wednesday is Quitness Day, the one-year anniversary of Game 5 on May 11, 2010, when LeBron James practically stood on the deck of the USS Missouri signing surrender papers against Boston. Wow. James quit on the court against the Celtics in Game 5. And, just to seal the deal, he quit at the end of Game 6. Preparatory to quitting on Cleveland in the decision. Okay, people, if someone from your own town writes that about you, you can't be in the GOAT conversation unless the people that consider that person the GOAT are mushy inside when it comes to integrity. What this guy is saying happened. What this guy is saying happened. We saw it happen. I remember watching. I was cheering for LeBron back then. I'm almost ashamed of myself. I was like, let's see if this is going to happen. And I saw him quit. I saw him try to make a statement of some sort by quitting. No. No. Cardinal rule. A man, an athlete, sportsmanship. I mean, sure, in junior high, maybe high school, maybe even a bad day of a college kid. But what was it? Year seven at this point in a pro career? You quit in the NBA playoffs? It happened. You guys know. You can probably tell I'm not a big uh, person on forgiveness unless someone really deserves it. LeBron James got forgiveness by default. I don't think he ever asked for it. And he's gotten forgiveness for every piece of trash thing he's done ever since. Anyway, let me continue reading. Quitness Day, of course, derives from Nike's Witness campaign to sell expensive sneakers to poor kids. Oof. The concept also gives a tip o the tankard to Great Lakes Brewing Company, which whipped up a quitness ale soon after James took his talents to South Beach. 
The ale left a bitter aftertaste. Man, I mean, they came up with quitness day because of the behavior of someone that you want to call the goat. It's not possible for someone like that to be considered one of the greatest athletes of all time in any sport whatsoever. If they invented quitness day based on that person, how is he a great sportsman and has quitness day created at the same time? No, no, an ale. <laughs> they brewed quitness ale for him. I called the cue, the quit, the night of May 11th, 2010, in my column. I had no doubt I had just seen the most overpriced dog, this side of the Westminster Kennel Club. Wow. To dishonor James on Quitness Day, what will you quit Wednesday? Wow. This was a thing done in Cleveland or maybe all of Ohio. This is interesting. I was living in San Francisco at the time, but my roommate was from Cleveland. My roommate had moved uh, from Cleveland a long time ago. Not, not. But bottom line is he still had the Cleveland in him. And man, as sports fans, those people have suffered. And they really got behind the hope of LeBron James. And when he did what he did, woo-wee. But I'll jump to the real problem. We were still roommates when LeBron fled Miami and came back to Cleveland. And that roommate accepted him. I said, no, you, you can't accept him after what he did. He's just running wherever it's easiest. I guess they just were praying for something that badly. I don't know. To this day, to this day, I'm disappointed in him. Anyway, back to the article. It can't be anything helpful. He's talking about what you do on quickness day, quitness day, like smoking or drinking. There are no civic benefits to quitness day other than the reminding us never again to worship false idols. <laughs> exactly. I suggest whatever you do Wednesday. You do it left-handed in tribute to the elbow of death that afflicted the self-styled king in the Chicago series. So hand out those left-handed compliments. <laughs> Woo! Man, this guy was killing him. Completing the job is your enemy. Quitness day, by definition, is about leaving business unfinished. That is what he did in Cleveland. Why not bust out some Minwax? A furniture refinishing product only ho ho what fun you don't finish the job if you are of the culinary beat start a cake but take it out half baked you can always quit on NBA telecasts particularly if Stuart Scott is involved in the halftime show Stewie was the fool who said he was proud of his obnoxious part in that despicable exercise in ego inflation known as the decision so the decision was one of the most disgusting things humankind had ever seen at that point in time. And I've done a video on this before because as much as we can focus on LeBron James, ESPN promoted it. ESPN televised it. An hour's worth of that crap. No longer than an hour. I didn't know this about Stuart Scott. I don't remember those sorts of details, but I guess Stuart Scott <laughs> was... Uh, Excited to be a part of it. I'll have to go and try and find some archival footage of that. I also suggest, I'm reading again, we cut some slack to some of the previous scapegoats for failures in Cleveland sports. There we go. Yeah, let's let's cut. Let, I don't see people falling over backwards apologizing for the failures of other people and saying they're goats anyway. Okay, reading. Even Jose Mesa, bless his heart, who tried to win but choked egregiously instead in Game 7 of the World Series, looks good next to a quitter. Indeed. Go out trying. Go out trying.
Losing happens, but you don't quit. Not on the floor. <laughs> My God. So what are you going to give up? And don't say hating on LeBron. He has spent a year denying the undeniable. Let us remember on this of all days, the words of George Costanza on Seinfeld. I come from a long line of quitters. My father was a quitter. My grandfather was a quitter. I was raised to give up. Let us also remember that, like Art Modell, no matter what James wins, it will not make up for what he lost in the area where he spent so much time, his good name and reputation. Well, I agree with that last paragraph, except that it did not end up being true. I, I, I agree. You take shortcuts, you betray your city, you do it in a despicable manner. What you accomplish from that point on has a shit stain all over it, in my opinion. I don't know if it was the never-ending glazing from the media that convinced the world to just let that go, or why Cleveland welcomed him back the way they did. I'm sure not everyone did, but... He would not have delivered for Cleveland if not for a rigging of a finals. My God. His career should have ended right then and there. His return to Cleveland, stacking another st super team in a weak conference, just like he did in Miami. But this article, as mean as this article was, they didn't even know yet at the time that this had been conspired way ahead of time. LeBron James sat there on television and said, oh, I just, I, I, honestly, I just made the decision a little bit ago. He started thinking about it in the Olympics, 2008. Dwayne Wade's come out and talked about the phone call that happened after they both watched Kobe continue to win. And now we know that they tried to get Carmelo also. Premeditated cowardice. What kind of a competitor does that? What kind of an athlete does that? Oh my God. What do you guys have on Jordan? That he gambled? A guy who doesn't need sleep went to Atlantic City to blow off some steam with his dad and friends? <laughs> he engaged in legal activity to blow off some steam <laughs> and then came back and torched the team that he was playing against? What else do you guys have on Michael Jordan? <laughs> no. The things you let LeBron James off the hook for are amazing. Not in just how terrible what he did was, but by how deep the pit of examples is. I mean, this is chapter one in all of these fireside readings that I could do. Oh my God, LeBron James is exhausting and overwhelming. <sighs> Having to explain to people things that they shouldn't need explained to them. It's just exhausting. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little reading. <laughs>